Hey beauty lovers, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Yulisa. For today's video, I will be applying and sharing my full thoughts with you on the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Full Coverage Foundation. I have actually been testing this foundation since around the time that it came out, so it's been about three weeks now. So if you want to see the application swatches, my full thoughts, and if I'd recommend this foundation, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So this foundation does come with one fluid ounce and it retails for $14.99. Ulta often does have a buy one get one half off with NYX Cosmetics. So when I bought it, that's what I did. I bought the shades Warm Vanilla and Noon. Warm Vanilla is described as light with golden warm undertone. They also had Vanilla, which is described as vanilla with yellow undertone. Why would you include the name of the foundation in the description of the foundation? Vanilla is vanilla with yellow undertone. What? Um, so I thought vanilla, because it said yellow undertone, would be better for me, but it actually was more neutral than warm vanilla. So I got warm vanilla. Nude is described as light with neutral undertone. That doesn't make any sense to me because this is like a warm olive undertone. Warm vanilla is like a warm yellowy undertone. Both are slightly too dark for me um, because they do oxidize a bit. Warm vanilla matches me better. It is a little bit lighter than nude and warm vanilla isn't um, as dark on me once it oxidizes. They're both very similar, like you can't see that much of a difference in which one's darker or lighter or the undertone but there is a slight difference because they oxidized i went ahead and got the shade pale which is described as white ivory with yellow undertone i did want a fair shade that had a warm or yellow undertone and this was the only one that i found the rest were either cool or neutral or maybe they were described as warm or yellow but i didn't find them to be i think the undertones in all of these are quite odd, like I don't agree with some of the undertones. Um, this is very, very pale, as the name says, so it's hard to see the yellow in it, I guess. There are 45 shades in this foundation, and it does seem to go very, very fair. As you can see, this is the fairest shade, and I did see the darkest colors and all of the colors in store. They do have them for you to swatch in Ulta. At least the Ulta that I went to. And they do seem to go very, very dark. So here are the three swatches. This is the Pale Shade, Warm Vanilla, and Nude. And I have already let them oxidize. So this is the shade that they come out to be against my skin color. As you can see, it's a lot paler. This is looking a little bit peachy. And then you can see the oliviness in this. And that these are a bit too dark for me. So here's the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation compared to the rest of my foundations. I'm just going to name each one. This is NYX Pale, Huda Beauty's Panacota 130G, Colourpop's Fair 25, ELF Flawless Finish Foundation in Light Ivory, Fenty Beauty's 130W, Huda Beauty's Creme Brulee 150G, Kojin Do Aqua Foundation in 213, Colourpop's Light 50, NYX Warm Vanilla, NYX Nude, and Fiona Styles Luminous Finish Foundation in 05 Olive Beige. As you can see, pale is the fairest shade that I own now. And the last darkest one is one that I mix in with other foundations I can ever wear alone. As you can see, these are a little dark for me. This does look like an olive lighter version of this Fiona one, which I really like. I'm going to go ahead and read the claims of the foundation. It says, lightweight, waterproof, and pigmented AF. NYX Professional Makeup Can't Stop, Won't Stop Full Coverage Foundation hustles as hard as you do. 
This comfy liquid formula comes in 45 flattering tones that don't transfer. Every creamy shade glides on smooth, delivering matte coverage and color that stays true for up to 24 hours. This little overachiever also works to control shine and mattify your complexion all day long, but it doesn't stop there. This foundation is non-comedogenic and suitable for normal, oily combination and sensitive skin. So if you don't know what non-comedogenic means, it claims that it doesn't clog pores. When I noticed it's matte, I wanted to apply my oil beforehand because my skin has been dehydrated. My skin is usually oily combination, so usually oily in the T-zone, specifically my nose. I've gotten less oil on my chin and forehead lately, and then kind of normal on my cheeks, but lately since I don't drink enough water, I do see a huge difference when I drink water and when I don't drink water. My skin has been a lot drier, and then um, especially when I wash my face at night and I forget to apply my oil. So I've been testing the foundation when my skin was oily combo and then also when it was like oily dehydrated. So I kind of know how it works for both. So I wanted to moisturize my skin with oil. Um, I do apply sunscreen every day and the sunscreen I use had no problem mixing with it. And then lately I've been using the Catrice Prime and Fine Smoothing Refiner for visible pores and lines. Kills pores it says. So it's basically a pore filling um, primer. Tati did say that this is a dupe for the Tarte one in the pot. I don't remember the name. I will leave it down below. And I've been wanting to try that one out, but it's quite pricey. So I want to test this one out. I've been liking it. I do feel like um, it does fill in the pores very well. And it's not as matte as a Smashbox pore minimizing primer. So I do like that about this when I'm feeling like my skin is more dehydrated. I have tried this for about say like two weeks or more. So the foundation mixed very well with oil and my sunscreen and my primer. Like I said, I haven't found a sunscreen that I love yet and that is cruelty free. So I'm still on the hunt for that. If you have any recommendations, leave them down below. Lately, I've been mixing nude with pale. Nude is the warm olive -y. Pale is the fairest shade that they have. Um, and I've been liking that combination because there's not much of a difference in nude and warm vanilla today i'm just going to do warm vanilla two pumps and then pale like three-fourths of a pump i only need about two to three pumps with this foundation and i'm just going to apply it on my palette and go ahead and mix it up i've already washed moisturized and primed my face um i am thinking of doing a skincare an updated skincare routine soon so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that i do have um, my older skincare routine that I will link up in the eye. This foundation does kind of set down quite quickly, so I do it section by section. So I'm going to go ahead and do this area. I find that I do have to work quite quickly with it. I did not like this foundation with a brush. It is like a it's described as a liquidy foundation. It's described as a comfy liquid formula, and I agree that it feels like a liquid once it's on your skin, but when I apply it, it doesn't drip, so it kind of almost feels like a cream gel, and it doesn't, like, it doesn't run, basically, is what I'm trying to say. But then on the skin, it does feel like a thin liquid formula, like, it's really lightweight feeling. They claim that it is full coverage and waterproof. Waterproof, I have not tested that claim, but full coverage, I don't agree with. I often build it up on my scarring, and the lighting might wash out the scarring, so I'm going to try to go in closer and lower the ISO, which is the brightness, um, and then show you where these scars are popping up. I'm actually going to zoom you in now. So I have zoomed you in and I just want you to see that some scars do pop up and I applied about three to four stripes which is my normal amount. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply a little bit more where I see any scarness or redness. I am using a Shop Miss A sponge. I've been testing a lot of them out. 
I bought a ton of them and I put them in this container. So you will be seeing a video soon on what I think about all of those sponges. I bought basically all of them. I am going to buy the few that I have left to get just to really share my full thoughts on it because when I searched Shop Missy sponges, uh, I only found like the the original ones that they have and the pink one mostly and I couldn't find much of people's comparison or thoughts on the rest of the sponges. So I thought I would do that myself. I'm gonna go ahead and, and apply some on my forehead. I did already do my eyebrows and I really don't like doing my eyebrows before my foundation because I feel like I have to be very careful around these edges. But I like to start the video with some eyebrows. I'm gonna have to, again, I'm going to apply a little bit more where I see some redness. As you can see, I built it up in the areas where I have scars. And for the most part, it like evened out my skin, but I can still, I'm very picky about if it's going to say full coverage. So I can still see my scars right there and as you saw that blemish and then right there I don't want to apply more right there just because it's so close to my eyebrow but I don't agree that it's full coverage I believe it's like high medium coverage I think but not full coverage at all um as you can see it evened out the redness on my face I do have redness near my nose often that's just how my skin is. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the other side. This does start to like dry up on the palette if you don't work quickly with it as well. So that's kind of what happened on this side. So I feel like I'm not getting as much on this side so I will mix in more if I need to. The other thing that I find that happens with this foundation on any sponges is that it almost becomes matte on the sponge. And so then I, I no longer feel like I'm blending in my foundation with a moist sponge. I'm blending over like a, like a powdery sponge. So I don't love that. But like I said, the solution is you just work quicker with it. I'm not working as quickly as I would if I was applying it on my own without filming. Again, I'm going to apply some more where I see I need more and then also on my forehead. So I'm basically done blending the foundation. Again, as you can see, this is like a more recent scar. And it's still all there. And I've tried to build it up. So I'm going to try one more time. To build up anywhere that I see. As you can see, it does build well, like nothing bad happens when you build it up again, surprisingly, even though it's matte, but mm, you don't get that much more coverage. So the claim about full coverage, I don't agree with at all. Keep in mind that these lights do make any foundation or my skin look a bit dewier because of the bounce back of the light. 
and what I did notice is on here when I touch it doesn't have anything on my pinky so then I was like mm, that means that must mean it doesn't transfer on my face and and yeah once it sets down I don't have any sort of transfer so I do agree with the claims on that here is it on my neck like I'm gonna try to come up higher you can see the shade compared to my neck better in daylight but today it is cloudy so I'm only using the soft boxes as I go lower it obviously gets lighter but I just try to match mostly in this area of my neck hello so I am back I'm wearing the foundation now in the best way that I like wearing it and I'm gonna go ahead and roll the footage of me applying it in my favorite way and I'll talk you through it I found that three pumps of foundation is my ideal so I do two pumps of either warm vanilla or nude and one pump of the pale shade for the footage that you're seeing I'm using the shade nude because it's a little bit more olivey and I find that it matches me a little bit better so if my skin is very very dehydrated I add two drops of oil into the foundation I like rosehip oil. I will leave the oil down below. I find that it mixes very well with the foundation. It made it look less dry and matte and a little bit more dewy satin. I'd say satin, not necessarily dewy dewy. Since it's not full coverage, I found that I like to spot conceal over it either with the Tarte Shape Tape or the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. Again, if my skin is quite dehydrated, then I would rather use the ColourPop No Filter Concealer because it is a little bit more moisturizing and um, it has a little bit less coverage. But the Tarte one is a little bit more drying, so if I don't blend it in quite quickly and my skin is very dry, it'll try to like absorb it and then it's hard to blend. So it's just one or the other depending on how dry my skin is or not. So on to the review of this foundation. I find that it is not full coverage, unlike what the name and the claims say. I find that it's high medium coverage. As you all saw, even when I built it up, you can still see scarring through. And I'm very picky about foundations saying full coverage because full coverage should be full coverage. I shouldn't see a scar and all that. But it is a high medium coverage and I don't mind because like I said, I can just spot conceal those areas and my skin hasn't been breaking out as much and I have less scarring. So for me, I don't mind that, but if you really want full coverage and you're thinking this is gonna be the be all end all, um, it is not full, full coverage. It is kind of a weird texture, it doesn't drip. So when I put it on my palette, it doesn't drip down, but they claim that it's a liquid formula. So once you apply it onto the skin, it does almost feel liquidy and it feels very like light weight when you're looking at it it looks like it'll be a cream but when you apply it and you can feel the texture it feels like a liquid but overall the formula of it is very comfortable on the skin and it feels very lightweight like i don't it doesn't feel heavy or anything like a lot of fuller coverage or more matte foundations feel on my skin at least i did not like applying this with a brush it had a lot of streaks and that could be because of the more lightweight consistency of it I mainly only use brushes when it's a thicker cream formula, kind of like the Huda Beauty foundation. But I did not like applying this foundation with any sort of brush. Just sponge is what I liked. So it is a velvety matte finish. Velvety, like it feels soft on the skin. It's not overly drying or matte or cakey or... It's, it, it's not all that drying like a lot of other matte full coverage foundations are. This is very, 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 very long wearing. And I mean very long wearing. I can see now why they called it Can't Stop, Won't Stop foundation. It just keeps lasting and lasting and it wears very well throughout the day. I've worn this for over like, I'd say up to 10 to 12 hours. I have very long days and I barely get any oil. Um, if I have to blot maybe 
once if at all in the whole day i often get lines right there um kind of near my nose and especially right here in this crease that i have and at the end of the day with this foundation i didn't have that for the first time ever i've tried so many foundations and i didn't have any lines by the end of the day like it doesn't crease into them and i thought that was crazy this foundation has a huge array of shades and undertones although i would be careful with the undertone that they describe these foundations as. If you have a chance, I would recommend for you to go into Ulta and swatch the foundations on your skin to actually see the real undertones and shades. This foundation is also pretty affordable. It's $14.99 and like I said, Ulta often has the buy one get one 50% off. So if I were you, I would wait for that sale if it's not going on right now. So I did experiment a lot with this foundation. I tried mixing it with liquid highlighters and even another foundation, different sprays. So I first mixed it with Becca's Liquid Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone. And it was nice. It did make my skin overall look dewier. And I mean, I actually pumped it in. But it didn't really add moisture. I also tried the ELF's Liquid Highlighter. And that had quite a bit of like fine shimmer in it. And it also didn't really add moisture. Like highlighters aren't really to add moisture. It's just to give you that glowy look. Lastly, I tried the CYO Illuminating Mixing Cream into it and same thing. Overall look dewier but it didn't actually give me more moisture. I did prefer mixing in oil over any of the liquid highlighters just because it gave me a dewier look and it also provided me with more moisture. Adding in either highlighter or the oil did decrease the coverage a bit but I didn't mind since the foundation isn't full coverage on its own anyway. And what I found surprising was that even when I mixed these liquid highlighters and the, and the oil, it was still long lasting. I would think that it would make it less long lasting and stuff like that. No, it was still long lasting, which I loved. I also mixed the NYX Pale Shade with the Fiona Styles Luminous Finish Foundation in 05 Olive Beige. I also liked that combination because of the color that it made, like this is an olive shade and then I just toned it down so that it's fair enough for me. And also the finish because one is luminous and one is like a velvety matte so it was like more of a satin finish. I really liked that combination. I love how this foundation can mix with like a variety of ingredients like my primer, sunscreen, the liquid highlighters, the oil. It's very versatile in that way. So overall, I would definitely recommend this foundation. I have really been enjoying this foundation, especially for the price. Now, who would I recommend it for? Well, I kind of think everyone can make this foundation work for their skin. I obviously don't have all sorts of skin, but like I said, I have worn it on days where I am more oily and then days when I'm more dehydrated. So I feel like I can touch a bit on those. If you're oily, I feel it will control your oil very well and it's very long lasting. If it's normal and you want more of a satin or dewy look or you are dry or dehydrated then you can just add an oil or a liquid highlighter like I did or maybe mix it with another foundation that is more luminous. So these are all my thoughts on this foundation after trying it for three weeks. I really enjoyed trying out this foundation and filming this so I hope you enjoyed watching this as well. If you did go ahead and click the thumbs up button down below. Also don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is beautysetulisa. I will leave the link down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. And, um... And I'm gonna go swatches, swatches, swatches. I only, I mainly, so on to the review of these, these.